sit. Here we are about to take a walk with Willie. I always have him sit and wait at all the boundaries. You've already seen us sit and wait at the front door. He sits, he waits, you step through, you step back. If you want to give him a treat, good. At this point in his training, he's only been doing this for a couple of weeks, so we're still giving treats for success. Can do that, and then he walks through with you, okay, without pulling. And then here, of course, I'm by myself, so I'm gonna take a little left turn. These left turns are really important to do. The left turn, so your body's doing a lot of the work. And this move is really important. You're doing this, they're just like little, prompts. You're never letting the leash get tight again because continuous tension would make him pull more and cause more stress. Would get tension in the leash causes stress in the dog. So uh, you want to keep it loose and just communicate through little signals like that. Sit at the curb. And this, he just started being able to do this out on the street after a couple of weeks now. Sitting at the curb, waiting till I do a little sit stay, walking around both ways. And if he gets up, you say no, put him back, start all over again. Might help if I do a, a wider sit stay. I'm not standing right on top of him. See, we're starting the walk this way because, and then a reward, good. Because if we do all this stuff before we start the walk and we start in the inside of the front door and then we start having wait at each boundary and then this is a boundary of course and then okay, we're gonna go across the street in training mode, see how I'm making sure he doesn't pull me and he pulls a lot so sometimes you have to really reinforce that leash pulling thing. Remember this is Willie after just two weeks of training so he's got some more some more to go here, but sit. So I'm having him sit, and we start the walk here after he's done all that stuff. Pat his chest and say, go, go. And you'll see if you do that every time that you start a walk, you're gonna take him out on the street. He'll just be so much calmer because the training started on the inside of your front door, and the reward, for the most part, for getting out here and being free on the walk was, to move forward, the, the reward for doing all the sit stays at all the boundaries was that, hey, the sooner you do it and the better you do it, the quicker we're out here and you get to be free and you get to sniff and pee or whatever he needs to do. Um, and so it's also a, it's a, a training routine. You have to take him in and out of your place anyway. Why not do the training there? Because that's where you need it, where he's formerly would have pulled you through and you know dragged you through doorways and across curbs and things like that. So. That's what we're doing every day now with him. If you continue it, he's just gonna keep getting better and better because he just started this now. So uh, you need to continue doing this and you know, in a couple more weeks, he'll be twice as good as he is now. Okay, go. When you're walking Willie, you just wanna make sure that you keep the leash loose. Uh, when he's on free time, which is going to be most of the walk, and he's going to be sniffing, looking around, whatever, make sure that you keep the leash loose. If, if he tries to pull you, don't wait till he's at the end pulling you. Just before he gets to the end of the leash, just do this little signal like this. He's not pulling very much anymore. If I walk, maybe he'll start to pull, but not much. But he, he was pulling a lot more when you first got him. But basically, you want to keep the leash loose. You want to communicate with him like this, with little prompts. Or if it's, get, if it's really bad, you say, come, and he'll come back to you. Good. And that, every time you do that, it really, after you've done several hundred of these, which we've done at least a couple hundred in the last two weeks, the dog starts just staying closer to you naturally because you're, um, you're checking in with him. Every time you call him to come to you out on the street, you're checking in with him. He's coming back, checking in with you, getting rewarded. You make yourself relevant that way instead of just being the person that he drags around on the whole walk and then drags you back inside. So just keeping the leash loose and making sure that you're not allowing him to pull you like you're doing that kind of stuff. See, that will stop the pulling right away, just doing that. If it's really bad, come. 
keep calling them back to you. Good. That in itself draws them back to you. You'll see if you did five or six or eight of those in a row, which you could easily do in a minute or two, he'll just start hanging out around you and the pulling will stop. Just keep calling them back to come to you that way. And that goes a long way to stop the pulling on the leash that he, the issue he had before and so many other dogs have as well. So if he's sniffing, he's going towards something that he does that you don't want him to, to uh, get to. That was nothing, but let's say that it was. You just come, call him away from that. Call him away from that distraction or whatever that is on the ground. So much better, good boy, than saying leave it or drop it or whatever people would say. Call him away. It's, you're practicing your recall. The recall is the most important command that you're going to have. Could save his life someday having a solid recall. And uh, you don't have to say a bunch of crazy commands. Just come, call him away from that and he'll drop it and come away or he'll, he'll come away from it before he even gets to it. Come on, bud. Okay, sit. Good. Okay, sit. Good. Okay, sit. Good. Okay, sit. Good. Those are called consecutive sits for obvious reasons. You just walk a couple of feet, have him sit. You saw how I rewarded him each time. Even if he wasn't looking at me, I could lure him up without touching him, get eye contact. He's staring me in the eyes because of where I'm putting the reward and rewarding him straight down good. As he's getting the treat, he's still looking at me right in the eyes. It's a little thing, but it's, it's subtle, but it's really important to do whenever you reward him. It's, it, it just creates a far uh, more intense focus on you than doing this, like, you know, feeding him out of your hand as he looks at the ground or something else. It just makes you more of the one in charge if you always make sure that he's looking at you in the eyes when you're good, when you're rewarding him for a sit like that. Of course, you have to reward him a different way for down, but for sit, or any time that you want to do those, that some, a command like that where you're not luring him to stand up by doing it that way, that's a great way to reward him. Eye contact as you give it to him. And these consecutive sits really slow a dog down when they're on a walk out on the street. And uh, once you release him, go. After doing three or four or five or six of those, I think I usually do six or eight in a row and then that's it. it takes me all of a minute and a half. You'll see, just because of doing that, he's way calmer and he pulls you less. You do it every day, really changes the dog over time as far as how well they walk on the leash. All right, left hand circles. Okay, we're walking along. I do a complete circle. My body is doing all the work. I'm like hurting him at the end of that circle. Sit. Good. I'm just going to walk down the sidewalk and do a bunch of these in a row. Okay. Walk down the sidewalk, keeping him at my side, left circle. If he lags behind, come on, come on, buddy. Coax him to catch up at the end of that circle. Sit. And good. Do it again. Okay. Keeping him at my side, left circle, all the way around. Come on, buddy, come on. Sit. Good. This is a great exercise to do just to, to teach a dog to walk next to you. And you want to always turn left because that turning left draws the dog back next to you, which of course then keeps the leash loose. There's no tension on the leash. And uh, it's a very dominant move. When you turn left into the dog, it makes him feel safe and makes him feel like you're in charge. And so there's a distraction right there. Nope, if he pops up, you say no and put him back, of course. Those left-hand circles are very, valuable if you want to teach him to stop pulling you and walk right next to you on the street and you, you don't have to do very many of them just do six or eight of them a day just like you saw me do them and they'll really help uh, get him under control where he's pulling you a lot less when you're out on the street okay sit always have him sit I step away give the new person a little treat for him to take from him when I send when I send him over he waits till I come back I pat his chest and say go say hi gets the treat I say come call him right back to me if Willie had a problem jumping on people being overexcited when he's seeing seeing new people sit 
meeting people or you know in any situation oh there's somebody right there okay that's a good little distraction no always make sure that he stays in the sit stay you want to start practicing in a different way and making it harder for him to handle do a little walk around sit stay before you send him over to the person just makes him better makes him forces him to focus at a higher level go gets the treat come call him back to you you get to practice your recall your sit stay in this exercise sit he learns to not jump on new people if all the good stuff is down here the treats and then the petting there's no reason for him to jump we've done a bunch of these with Willie in the last couple of weeks with different people so he's really good at this and if you do it the same way he's just gonna keep getting better and better go you can pet him now with the other hand good boy come and always call him back to come to you good sit and that's the greeting routine sit good if he does not respond the first time you tell him to sit don't repeat it just pull up with a little bit of pressure like that you're not popping jerking hanging it's just a little bit of pressure continuous pressure his butt will hit the ground it will go down and then you release release it like that as soon as his butt hits the ground never repeat the command if you gently but firmly reinforce it after you tell him to do it it still is good because all he knows is you heard the command once and he ended up going there just make sure that if you have to help him do that uh, don't reward him unless he does it just only with your words you have to help him with the leash don't give him a reward because then the reward means nothing and he'll think he'll he'll get it either way so as you can see stay is built in to sit so we don't say stay you don't have to say stay he's just waiting until he's released this is just a basic sit stay where he allows you to walk around him from both ways and behind him from both ways and then if he stays there and he's successful at staying there walk back next to him good reward him that same way again and then you can release him by patting his chest and saying go or um, that's easy to do of course or if you want to keep walking with him on the clock in training mode you just say okay and he'll walk with you down that's how we're practicing down right now he's pretty good for two weeks he's not quite at a rock solid right away down as soon as you say it so that's why I'm still helping him a little bit with that with my left foot and just a little bit of leash tension but he's he's at the point where half the time you just raise your left foot like that and he just drops down without you even touching the leash so he's almost there and of course the stay is there we don't say stay stay is built into down as it is built into sit so you don't have to stay it say it you don't have to say stay once you say down he knows that he's supposed to stay there until he's released so that's that's something he's rock solid on already we're out in public and there's a lot going on behind us and he's getting a lot better with distractions out on the street if he does that successfully you want to reward him like this between his feet good see how he waited until I put the little reward there and withdrew make sure he's not grabbing it out of your hand or you know touching your hand trying to get to it he's got to be calm and and accept that reward uh, respectfully like that so you put it there you let go of it and withdraw and he takes it off the ground like that that's the best way to have him uh, accept the reward and he's waiting for you to walk back next to him this is the only way that he ever gets up out of a down stay so when you come back to get him pat your leg and say okay have him sit and then if you want to let him be free you pat his chest and say go and he's free the way that we've been teaching Willie how to come to us is uh, it's very it's very methodical it's just you just do the same moves every time and if you do it exactly the same thing every time it becomes like second nature pretty quickly so of course we're only practicing uh, with him on a leash because he's not off leash yet and of course we only go off leash once he was really perfect on leash so we're still teaching him how to come in a lot of different situations so always practice with a leash put your left hand through that loop and we use the right hand for the reward make sure you call him to this target it's a closed fist 
um, because in an emergency, this is all you're going to have. You're not going to have a leash, you're not going to have a reward, but you're going to have your target and he's not going to know there's nothing in there. So that's why you want to call him to this target, this closed fist, because if you call him to an, an open hand or a half open hand or something, he's going to know there's nothing in it. So always call him to this and that way it will work in an emergency. Um, always practice calling him when he's distracted. Never call him to you when he's staring at you because that's not a real life situation. So you always want to practice in a way that it at least simulates a real life situation. He's interested in something else. He's moving away from you. Uh, something like that. He hears the command, he breaks away, comes running back to you. So in this case, where he won't stop looking at me, you just toss a treat, go, there's a distraction, come. And good. And see how I grab the leash with my left hand? That's why you do left hand leash, right hand reward. Because since he's going to be on your left, that means the leash comes up on his right side. So when he's coming to you, come. It's going to be on your left. So it's easy to give him the reward with your right hand and, and take the leash with your left. And then you can step into him and have him sit. It's really easy to get him back on the clock that way. But also make sure that you back away, because when you back away, he rushes to you. And if you want him to always run to you really fast whenever you call him to come, instead of just like walking over to you or having just some real mediocre recall like that, always practice in a way that makes him rush to you. So when you back away, it makes the dog rush to you. Standing still isn't half as good. Always back away and the dog runs to you. If you practice that way, for a few weeks, which could be a few hundred repetitions. Even then after that, you can be standing still or you're back to a wall or something like that and he'll still rush to you because of the way you practiced. So the way that you practice um, depends on how well he does it in real life. Okay, come on buddy. And always remember to never repeat the command. So if he ever ignores you, let's say that he, I said the C-O-M-E command and he ignored me, do a little prompt like that. Just like that. He'll see you back and away, he'll see the target, and he'll come to you. Good. So those are the rules for practicing the, the come command. Okay. Sit. We always have Willie sit before we come in the house. Actually, both ways, going in and out of the front door. Have him sit, step in, he waits till you come back. Okay, he walks through with you without pulling. We're gonna go the other way too, just to show you the whole sequence in and out. So if we were bringing him in, he'd come in, he'd sit, he'd go in his crate, and then we'd take off his stuff and close the door. If we're bringing him outside, we're gonna have, bring him up to the front door, we're gonna have him sit before you open the door, because it's harder if he's sitting when you open the door, because the door might trigger him to pop up. So always do it the hardest way possible, because that's the way he's gonna be the best, right? So we're gonna step out when he's sitting on the inside, just to accentuate this is our boundary, not his. Never ever call him through, because then you'll just be teaching him to rush after you when you go outside. That doesn't help us. And you never call a dog, of course, out of a downstay or sit stay because it creates anticipation and he'll have less of a solid downstay or sit stay. So we're only teaching him there's only one way you leave a sit stay or a downstay, and that's when we come back to get you. That's why he already has such a high level of stay. Okay, once we go stand back next to him, okay, we're gonna come out like this. See how he's not pulling me? Sit. If we're bringing him out in the yard, we're gonna have him sit on the outside. He walks through respectfully and calmly through that boundary. We bring him outside, have him sit, and then release him out here. Go.